Hello, my name is Daryl Briggs. I want to welcome you to Photography 101, a tutorial on white balance. Today we're going to discuss what white balance is and how to set your camera with the preset settings for white balance. First off, what is white balance? That is your camera setting to accurately adjust for the color temperature of the light source you're using to take your images. All light sources have a color temperature. The sun has a color temperature. It's different than, say, light that's in shade. The light of an incandescent bulb has a color temperature that's different from fluorescent lights. Every light source has its own color temperature. Color temperature is measured in Kelvin. This isn't really necessary for you to know that, but it is. you do need to know that every light source has its own color temperature. By adjusting the color temperature, you'll be able to remove unsightly color casts that might appear in your images. Now, you may say, well, I never see these in real life. Well, you don't. The human eye and the brain processes the images that you see and adjusts for it without any other type of compensation. For instance, if you go outside and you see someone wearing a white t-shirt in bright daylight sunlight, well, yes, it looks white. That same person can then walk underneath inside a building and go underneath fluorescent lights and it will still look white to you. However, your camera cannot do that. You have to tell your camera what the light source is so that the t-shirt will appear white when it's under fluorescent lights and it'll appear white when it's under daylight. If you don't set it correctly, your images will usually have a strange blue, perhaps green, or it may be even an orange color cast to it. So now let's take a look at a couple of images with correct settings and with incorrect settings so that you can see the differences. The first shot is a food shot shot at the studios of Walnut Ridge for a food client and they wanted a warm ambiance to this particular image of their shrimp. So they brought in burlap sacks, coconuts, chips, all to add to a warm feeling. This exposure was set and the white balance was set to a flash to maintain the correct warmth that was actually there in the scene. Now the same exposure set with the white balance to fluorescent light provided a much cooler temperature than what the scene actually was. If you look at the two, you can see that you've lost the warmth that the first photo had. The food client would not be happy if I had the incorrect white balance for this. Here's another shot, again with the same exposure, but this time the white balance was set to auto white balance. Again, you can look at a side-by-side -side comparison and see that the image is a much cooler. It lost the warmth that the food client wanted. Now let's take a look at some outdoor photos. This photo of a house shot in bright daylight sunlight is correctly set, the exposure and the white, white balance was set to daylight. Here you can see the same photo with the same exposures, but this time the white balance was set to cloudy. Look at the two side by side. You'll notice that there's a slight difference in the green grass and the difference in the blanket. It does not capture the cloudy white balance setting, does not capture the accurate colors that were actually there on the scene. Here's another image, this one with the white balance set to shade. You, again, you can see in the side-by-side -side comparison that although it's close, there are subtle differences and the actual colors do not appear correct compared to the correct white balance setting of daylight light. Now let's talk about how to set the white balance on your camera and what icons to look for to set the preset white balance settings. First off, your camera probably either has a button marked WB or a menu item, and this is where you will set your white balance. If it's a button, simply press the button and then rotate one of your knobs or press your other buttons to cycle through the various icons that represent the color temperatures that you have with your presets. It's the same is very true if you have a menu item list. Go into the menu, find your white balance, push the buttons for setting that particular item, and then you can cycle through the different icons that represent the different white balance settings. What are those icons? Let's take a look at some of the common ones you'll find on most cameras. First off, AWB. This is auto white balance and this is probably what you're used to shooting in if you're unfamiliar with white balance. It's your camera's best guess at what it thinks the color temperature is of the light source. It's okay and it works great in most circumstances but it's not going to be 100% accurate. Also, the accuracy of auto white balance can vary greatly between cameras and camera 
makes and models. This is the setting for custom white balance, two triangles with a large rectangle over it. We're not going to use this tonight. We're not going to go into this right now. We're going to go into this in part two, but I wanted you to see what the icon was for it so that if you came across it, you would know what it was. But again, we'll address this in part two of white balance. The icon with the K in it is simply the white balance setting for setting Kelvin temperature in the white balance. You set it to K and then your camera will let you then dial in the Kelvin temperature that you want to set it for. Typically this ranges from 25 to 7500 degrees Kelvin. Again, if you're not familiar with this, we don't really want to go into this yet, but you would use it if you knew the exact color temperature of a light that you were using as your light source or if you wanted to do a special effect. But let's take a look at the ones you will probably most likely use. First off is the light bulb symbol. This usually looks, this light usually looks blue in most photos except those indoors or at night. You would use it indoors unless you're under fluorescent light conditions such as an office setting or anywhere there's fluorescent bulbs. Speaking of fluorescent bulbs, this is the symbol for that. It's a large, long tube or a long rectangle. Use this for office light with fluorescent, with fluorescent lighting. Also, if your indoor photos look a little too green, then switching to this white balance setting may adjust for that. This is the symbol for the sun. Use this when you're outdoors in bright daylight and you'll get accurate color renditions in your images. This is the icon symbol for a flash. If your main light source is a strobe of some kind, be it a studio strobe, maybe a speed light that you attach to your hot shoe on your camera, or even your built-in flash on your camera, this is the white balance setting that you want to use for that. The cloud symbol is used for outdoors when the sky is cloudy, or you can also use it if you do intentionally want to add a little more warmth than what's actually in the scene. Use this in daylight when you want to add that warmth. Otherwise, just use it when it's cloudy outside. The symbol for a house casting a shadow is used when your subject is standing in shade. Use this for that and you'll get good color renditions for the shade. So let's review. Different light sources have different color temperatures. Your camera can only guess at what the light source is that you're using and therefore it's only guessing at what the color temperature is. This can often result in strange color tints to your images. If you'll use your camera's white balance preset settings to accurately reflect what your light source color temperature is, you'll get much better images. Remember, if you set your white balance incorrect, your images will have a strange cast to it, strange color cast to it. So, thank you again for joining us. Join us for part two when we'll learn how to set custom white balance. And I'd like to also thank our sponsors, Studios at Walnut Ridge, DFW Photography Club of Texas, and Expo Imaging. Thank you.